19 strikeouts for Randy Johnson. He goes into his windup. Here's the pitch. He struck him out. He's got 20. And he points to the sky with his ball. 20 strikeouts for Randy Johnson. What an effort tonight by the big unit. The big unit ready. And the 2-2 pitch. He struck him out. Perfection, Randy Johnson. A perfect game. And the 0-1 delivery. And a little blooper. Here's a pitch and a fly ball right field and the 2023 Arizona Diamondbacks are headed to the World Series for the second time in their 26 year history and the celebration is on the field for the Diamondbacks. Great moments in Arizona Diamondbacks history all woven together with one voice that of our next guest Greg Schulte has been the radio play by play voice of the Diamondbacks ever since their inaugural moments in wow. 1998 and the governor as he's affectionately referred to in these in the desert joins us on hot stove Greg good morning good to see you my friend. Good to be seen. <laughs> we, How you guys doing? We've doing been wanting good, to get man. you on for a couple weeks now, uh, not only to talk Diamondbacks, but to kind of celebrate your career because you decided to hang up the microphone this year after a great run. Almost 4,000 Diamondbacks games. Wow. I'll say this on, yeah. on Greg's behalf. There are a lot of guys that do what Greg does, that dig themselves on social media, right? Yeah. They like to pull oh, themselves yeah. up. He is not one of those Make guys. Make sure you watch me or listen to me. Right. Here. That That's why we're doing it for you, Gub. Uh, looking back well, on it, that. man, what a great yeah. run you had. And I'm sure 1998, that first spring training, feels like it was right around the corner just yesterday. That was down in uh, Tucson, at Tucson Electric Park, to be honest with you. And uh, we shared the facility uh, with the Colorado Rockies. Uh, and the White Sox were also down there at that time. So, we stayed there and then uh, came up to the Valley uh, where everybody now trains in Phoenix uh, in 2011 for the first year. So how did that come about? What was the phone call that, that led you to getting the job in the first place? Well, I was working uh, Arizona State Sports with uh, Tom Dillon here in Phoenix. Uh, it's football, baseball, basketball. I was working Suns basketball with the uh, legendary Al McCoy. And uh, I was working Phoenix Firebirds baseball. And I go back to Arizona State days uh, when wow. I was working there. They had an outfield of Barry Bonds, uh, Mike Devereaux, and Odeby McDowell, which was a pretty good outfield at yeah. that time. So, wow. But uh, I, was, I was doing baseball, and uh, my true love was baseball. I grew up in uh, the uh, northwest portion of Illinois. I was a big Cardinal fan. Listen to Harry Carey and Jack Buck growing up. Moved out to Phoenix in uh, 1979 with my wife, Nancy. And uh, uh, worked at KTAR, and uh, when there was talk about the Diamondbacks or Arizona, I should say Phoenix getting a, an expansion team, I went to uh, Jerry Colangelo, the owner of uh, yeah, the, he had uh, the Suns. Suns at the time. Yeah, yeah, he had the Suns, and uh, he was a big principal, obviously, in the, getting Diamondbacks uh, baseball to uh, Phoenix, and told him of my interest to that, and ended up getting the job. So I, I got a actually uh, Jerry came into the radio station to do a show on uh, a particular day and he pulled me aside and he said listen uh, we're bringing you in we're bringing Tom Brenneman and Bob Brenly in to do our uh, broadcast you'll do some TV but mainly you'll be our radio guy so uh, I ended up doing the first five years with Rod Allen on the uh, radio side yeah I mean it, uh, there's too many games there almost 4,000 for us to go through chapter and verse your favorites your biggest moments but I mean when I hear your voice I've got a favorite I, oh oh well, you do let's I, hear it then I've, I've, I've got a favorite and you know obviously I'm, I'm gonna uh, not include Gonzo's hit for the World Series you go back to uh, 2011 and it's the next to last day of the season and the Diamondbacks are playing the Dodgers I think we had a crowd of about 26,000 at Chase Field. It was a 1 1 ball game that we went to the 10th inning. The Dodgers got five in the 10th off Mike Owings. <laughs> so it looked like it was over. There were two outs in the bottom of the 10th inning, and Cole Gillespie hit one to first base. And I can't remember who the first baseman was or the pitcher was, but uh, he didn't cover in time. Gillespie got a hit. Next thing you know, we've got the bases loaded. We get a hit, get a run in, get a bases loaded walk, and then Ryan Roberts steps to the plate. Remember the tap man? Yeah, Ryan sure. Roberts. He uh, he had a grand slam to left center field to win it. So the Dodgers had come up with five in the top of the 10th. The D-backs had come up with six. And there was 
I, I, I swear to you guys, there must have been 35 people in the ballpark at that time because it was a long <laughs> ball game and that crowd of 25 or 1,000, what it was, it, it had dwindled down to nothing. But that just shows you the game of baseball. You never know until the very end. And that, that game still sticks in my memory like crazy. It also shows us why uh, Greg is a institution guy, a team guy, because that favorite memory was not a Randy Johnson strikeout. <laughs> Or uh, you know, one of the yeah. stars that had played in Phoenix during your run. It was it was Tatman. Unbelievable. Hey, I want to ask you the voice. I want to ask you a couple of things about just the voice, uh, your voice, I should say. Probably number one is being recognized like in grocery stores, or if you're talking yeah. somewhere, people probably go, "I know that voice." How yeah. often does that happen to you? Well, you know, I've done TV and I've done a lot of TV uh, in Arizona, but uh, it, it, it's surprising, Harold. You you mentioned it. I get that a lot of times. I know that voice. I know that voice. Or you're Greg Schulte. I, I can finally put the face with the voice now. You know, and, and I say, well, sorry for it by that, but uh, it, yeah, it's 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 interesting. It's a lot of fun, and uh, uh, you know, this market has grown. And, and Matt, you know it very well here in Phoenix. Uh, you got so many fans from so many other teams that live here. Uh, it, Phoenix yeah. has been a, a place that has really gathered a lot of people over the years in the Midwest, the Northwest, even the Northeast and the South, uh, Southeast. And so you get you know, a lot of Cub fans here. You got a lot of Dodger fans here. Just, we carried Dodger baseball here in Phoenix until the time we got the Diamondbacks. So, you know, they were they right. were saddled with Ben Scully all those years. Think about that. <laughs> and so, yeah. They're turning the but, dial going, oh, this doesn't sound like Vince. Yeah. What, what, yeah. what, what, yeah. what? Who, who's this guy doing this game here? Yeah. Hey, mm -hmm. uh, so going back to the World Series in 01, and, and when we listened to your call there, the, the joy, I mean, the triumphant joy f to be a radio voice of a team, a TV voice of the team where you're on the plane and you're traveling with everybody and you've really got skin in the game. It just came pouring out of you in that final out. And of all teams to beat, it's the Yankees. It was such yeah. a memorable fall classic. Um, it, walk us through that that at bat, the Gonzo hit, what happened leading up to it, Grace's at bat. Give us your memories of that. Well, the one thing you remember is uh, the uh, the home run uh, by Soriano. I mean, he almost took that ball off the ground. I mean, it was a great pitch by Schilling. Yeah. And he went down and got it, and he clubbed it out of there into left. And so you knew when he hit that home run, you were going to get Mariano Rivera for two innings. And it ain't going to happen, right? I mean, this is the greatest reliever in the history of the game. He's coming in. He gets through uh, the eighth inning. Uh, does give up a hit to Finley, but uh, that's the extent of it. Uh, Randy pitches the ninth inning. The crowd, of course, he had gone nuts. So uh, with that, he struck out Posada to end the inning. So Mark Grace comes up to lead off the ninth and a uh, little inside out swing. And he uh, hits one to center field. Then an abundant attempt by Miller. Rivera does what he has never done. Uh, he throws the ball away to second base. Jeter can't come up with it. You've got two on. Then you got a situation where. Uh, uh, you know, you get the Womack double to tie it, and then this little blue pit by Gonzalez, who doesn't like the blue pit. He thought it was a line drive single to center field, but uh, uh, the celebration was on in Phoenix. It was, it was really momentous. I'll tell you what, I was working with Jim Traber on the broadcast at that time. Tom had been working. Tom Brunham had been working with Rod Allen. We'd split up the broadcast uh, game that way. And uh, I was working with Traber, and we kind of told each other, at the end of the uh, top of the ninth inning to get this far and not get this done. Is this team going to do it? And, you know, again, with Rivera out there, it sure didn't look good, but they did get it done. And that was that team that year. They had a lot of players who had done a lot of things individually over their careers, but had never won a championship. And uh, they got that championship in 01. Uh, you talked about it. It was an amazing series, but you know what? <laughs> I, I want to ask you this question too, because that was the nine 11 series. Yes. And we always hear about the New York side and we cover the Yankees and the Mets and all the things that went on in New York City. What was that like for your team at that time? And what were you guys talking about on your flight back to Phoenix and different things? Well, uh, just like everybody else, the, you know, the world had been turned upside down, the U.S. especially. And uh, uh, we came back, we started playing in Colorado. And I remember Kurt Schilling took the ball that day and pitched well. And, uh, you know, we finished the regular season out. We got to the postseason, took care of St. Louis in a great series that went five games. And uh, Tony Womack got the winning hit there to 
get us on into the National League Championship Series against Atlanta. Uh, took four out of five against Atlanta, including uh, uh, the last two or three games, I should say, in Atlanta. They went D-backs went one one in Arizona, but uh, took all three games in Atlanta that poured them into uh, New York. And you know, there was a thought that Seattle is good. What they won 116 games that year, guys. Uh, uh, in 2001. Yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah. 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 So, you know, there was a thought that they were going to play Seattle, but uh, the Yankees prevailed. And of course, all eyes were on New York. Everybody was saying, and rightfully so. I mean, they, you know, uh, it was a great story to unfold. And every, people ask me, would you change that World Series having won the first two in Arizona uh, to win a game there in New York? And maybe come home the champions that way. And I said, you know what? It ended the way it should have ended. Oh, the yeah. Yankees, and I think the world got the fact that you know the Yankees got three unbelievable victories there. It went back to Arizona. The Diamondbacks had that blowout win in Game Six, uh, and then one Game one Seven. One of my so. favorite World Series of oh, all was, time as a fan. Hey, let me ask you in the, in the brief them. time we have left, Governor, yeah. of the handful of no hitters in Arizona Diamondbacks history. Which yeah. of these two is the most unlikely for you looking back? <laughs> okay. Ejax after he like walked yeah. eight guys or yeah. Tyler Gilbert 11 years later, a guy that not folks uh, hadn't really heard of at the time. Well, Ejax almost came out of the game. Uh, A.J. Hinch was really close to pulling him out because he walked, uh, he walked the world in that ball game. What a great guy. Yeah, he got a ground ball to short to end it uh, to Stephen Drew, and he pitched the no-hitter. Uh, I think the, the, the crazy thing about Tyler Gilbert, it was his first major league start. It was against San Diego, so it wasn't again against a bad ball club. It was against a good ball club. But uh, that one was, I think, a little bit more. Uh, I didn't think that one was going to happen at all, but it did. You know, if I can just kind of conclude on my end here, I've been very fortunate to call a lot of things, a lot of great moments in sports history. And I, I really feel fortunate. There have been 24 times that one event has happened and 16 times another major event has happened that I've been able to call those. Would you happen to know what those are? 16 wow. times? 16 times something has happened by a hitter. 24 times something has happened as a pitcher. In Major League Baseball history. Uh, well, I know, I know. I just, I just Let's heard uh, three, Adam in our research department game. say that you, heard, you called six no hitters, three Diamondback no hitters, including the perfect game by the unit. Perfect. So there's a perfect game. That's 24. What was a 16 uh, by a hitter? The cycles. Greg Colbert? Nope. No, 3,000 nope. hits. Well, that was that was that was something. The Greg Colbert cycle. 16 four home run games. I was gonna. Wow. JD four Martinez in games? Los Angeles. You Only called 16, 16 four no, no, homer no. games. I, I, I didn't call them. I called one. Oh, I'm just saying that happened oh, 16 times. Got it. Times. Got it. Got yeah. It. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I should have clarified and that. He, yeah. may, he may be on his way back to the desert. Well, from he what could be. That, I, I think that'd be a good uh, good guy. I wish he wouldn't have left in the first place. But, uh, yeah, it is what it is. That's I've had smart. a great career. I've, I've enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to retirement. And, uh uh, anytime the Diamondbacks call, I'll be glad to help I, them I out. But positive, thank you, guys. Hey, I'm positive, Gub, that uh, the Diamondbacks are not going to let you get too far away. In fact, I would imagine sometime at spring training, Derek Hall is going to have you wearing a sandwich man board on the uh, cold and flu <laughs> aisle of fries, <laughs> giving out tickets for Diamondbacks games. So way to and go, man. And babies. Hey, we appreciate you. Um, thank congrats you. on great. wrapping her up. And I'm sure Thanks, we're going to see you at the ballpark at some point. Congrats, Greg. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations, man.